there's been this crazy buzz that Jesus has risen from the dead. The Bible's greatest miracle. There's a gap between his resurrection and his ascension. Remains one of its greatest mysteries. Well, what was he doing during those 40 days? Why is they he don't back? Tell you. Now religion and science meet at the cross. Much more happened in these 40 days than we're told through the Gospels. He's telling you how he overcame death. A new investigation into the last 40 days that sparked the Christian faith. Let's get down into it and see what really happened. What it reveals could impact the faith of millions. The New Testament of the Bible. Foundation of Christianity. 27 books that culminate in two miraculous events at the heart of the Christian faith. The resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ. The resurrection, the ascension, are what tells us that Jesus is who he said he was. I am the resurrection and the life. Either Jesus was a liar, either he was a big deceiver, or he was who he said he was. It's not worth having a Christian faith if these things didn't happen. Uh, everything hinges on this. The other accounts of Jesus' life, his birth, are filled with commentary. There's connections being made. There's explanations given. When you get to the resurrection accounts, they are very spare and they are unadorned. Why would they spend chapter after chapter after chapter detailing things going on in Jesus' life when the important thing is that he was raised from the dead, but they don't tell any stories about it? This remains a mystery. The New Testament itself explicitly states that much of what happened during the 40 days is not included in the Gospels. For centuries, non-believers have been asking how is it possible that an entire faith could be based on so little information? In the New Testament, Jesus Christ comes back from the dead and walks the earth for 40 days. At the end of those 40 days, he ascends to heaven. In their imagination, most people think of him sort of flying out of the tomb, speaking to a couple people, and just going to heaven. But he was with them for 40 days. The Son of God, with a physical body, able to be touched, still having the nail prints in his hands, walking around, talking with people, eating with people, teaching people for weeks. Even for devout Christians, the period of the 40 days can be a blind spot. Yet those days number among the most profound in the Bible. I don't think there's any way you can read the stories in the New Testament and particularly the Gospels as it relates to these very issues of resurrection to ascension in the 40 days. There's no way to understand them without accepting some form of mystery. We don't know. I think mystery's cool. Jesus appearing would have been as outrageous to the people experiencing them, to his followers, as they would be to us. This was not a magical time where weird stuff happened. It was a, a time just like our time now where people didn't rise from the dead. Uh, people don't rise from the dead. People die and they stay dead. This is since the beginning of time. This is what has happened. One obvious question arises. Why 40 days? 40 is an evocative number in ancient Israelite tradition. 40 years in the wilderness. Jesus' own experience at the beginning of his public ministry, 40 days in the desert. So the 40 days at the end of the story of Jesus' time on earth, it's a signal. I'm not sure that that has got any symbolic significance. I think it might just be that the eyewitnesses remembered he was there for 40 days and then he left. Centuries of religious art depict the resurrected Jesus Christ walking among the living for 40 days. But what did he do? What did he say? The principal sources of our knowledge of Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth who walked on this earth, are the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But besides the New Testament, are there additional tools, materials that could help illuminate this most profound of Christian beliefs, including the most revered and controversial artifact in Christendom, the Shroud of Turin? 
The Shroud of Turin is a 14 foot by 3.5 feet piece of linen, which bears an image of a crucified man, frontal and dorsal. It has blood on it, and it's believed by some to be the burial cloth of Jesus Christ. In 2010, after a decade of research into the Shroud of Turin, computer graphics artist Ray Downing made headlines around the world by applying the latest in computer technology to the image of the crucified man on the ancient burial cloth. If this is real, it's a witness to an impossible event. Impossible events aren't supposed to leave records, and yet there it is. It's a possible record of the core truth of the Christian faith, the body of Jesus Christ at the very moment of resurrection. Beyond the shroud, are there other potential sources of information about the 40 days? Sources beyond the Hidden New Testament. So that they wouldn't be lost. The birth and death of Jesus Christ is recorded as taking place over 33 years at the beginning of the first century AD. In the New Testament, for 40 days after his death, the resurrected Jesus Christ makes six key appearances, starting in Jerusalem and stretching north to Galilee. Jesus appeared at various times and in various locations. He was not bound by some small geographic area, but yet he was able to move and appear in different places at different times. Use it to different visualize people. the six key moments when a resurrected Jesus Christ appears to his followers and changes the Brown. world is a singular blueprint for visualizing the six key appearances by the resurrected Christ the woman during the first the person to encounter the resurrected Jesus how interesting to have a woman be the one to whom Jesus first appears this is highly irregular at the time of Jesus uh, women were not even allowed to testify in court they 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 were not accepted as witnesses so you'd never choose them if you were concocting an account to be the witnesses to this event. The Bible identifies that first witness as Mary Magdalene, a woman with a questionable past. Mary Magdalene is one of those mythical women who's been used like a scrim onto which uh, tremendous fantasies have been projected for 2,000 years. Most powerfully, she's remembered in the Christian imagination as the repentant prostitute. She has been associated with sin, particularly with sexual sin and prostitution. Even in the English language, a Magdalene is a synonym for a prostitute. In a modern legend, uh, Mary Magdalene becomes uh, Jesus' lover and wife, and in the Da Vinci Code, she actually bears him a child. Mary is such a strange figure in some ways because traditionally people have said she was a prostitute and yet Jesus chooses her. I just can't imagine the authors of that time, the men of that time, making up a story like that. It just gives too much to her. And why would Jesus have done that? It's one of the most important moments in Christianity. According to the New Testament, the first of Jesus' six key appearances after the resurrection and the beginning of the lost 40 days. And he says to her, Mary, calls her name, go and tell my other followers that you're seeing me, that I'm alive. This is the moment in history, the hinge upon which of all uh, history turns, this moment that he, he's revealed to another human being in resurrected form. It was a moment of faith for her. It was a moment of love, an encounter Peter. with the risen Appearance moment. number two in the history of the 40 days between resurrection and And they were ascension. going back to ordinary life that would never be ordinary again. It seemed as if at all just gone up in smoke as if the dream was over, the ministry was finished, 
and Jesus' uh, enemies had triumphed over him. Uh, this, just our... him. Are you the only one who doesn't know what's happened? The answer is, like, where have you been? We been. were hoping, and their hope was dashed. The crushing disappointment of the crucified Jesus. How could it have all come to this? The stranger then uh, starts to unpack to them why the Messiah had to die. He basically gives them a Bible study on the road. God had promised a Messiah who would take away the sins of the world, that that Messiah had to be crucified that he had to raise from the dead on the third day. They don't know who he Love is. This. Jesus picks up the bread, he blesses it, and he breaks it. And in the sitting and eating together, as the story says, Does. they recognized him. When Jesus breaks the bread and the disciples recognize him, it's an This is the resurrected Jesus of Nazareth. Didn't our hearts burn at that moment? Didn't we have a good feeling when we were talking to Body that had to be broken, him? the broken bread at the Last Supper. And it's at that Eucharistic moment when you break the bread that you see who Jesus is. At Somebody. every point of the day, somewhere, is doing this ritual. There is no meal that has lasted as long as the Last Supper. The journey of the resurrected Jesus Christ is far from over. Within hours, he will make his third appearance. This time to his... say the word miracle, they're usually referring to an event The location of no the third way. appearance. An upper room in the ancient and sacred city of the Jewish people. Jerusalem. What the Jewish? atmosphere would have been like. Everybody felt the darkest of darkness. There was no hope. There was no future. Everything they had believed was gone. The experience of grief is a powerful one in, in our lives. And I know as a pastor, I often see people who walk by a casket of a loved one and uh, eyes they looked into, beautiful eyes that understood them are now shut. That is magnified if the eyes that looked into yours were Jesus' eyes. The terror of talking. Roman violence drives the followers of Jesus Christ Nothing. into hiding. For centuries, Christian. It seems that he goes right through the walls, right through those locked doors that have been locked and, out of you know, fear. there's going to be the end of the world and the day of judgment. And come into be the ready. kingdom. You are the sons of the living Father. Thomas said if what you... a lot of us would have said. I don't believe it. And he calls Thomas forward and says, Thomas. Take your fingers and put them into my Jesus hands. Jesus of Nazareth had been crucified as a rebel against Precision the Roman Empire. And it's incomprehensibility. Six in some key ways. appearances. According to the book of John, forget about their disappointments that he didn't become a glorious king of Israel. After all night of catching nothing, they see a man. They look up in the mist of dawn and they see a figure. And how many out. fish are there? You know, dozens, scores. No, it actually gives us a number, 153. You get this time and... actually physically going back yep. to heaven. The ascension, of course, is mysterious because we don't see people ascending to heaven very often. The scene was beyond human words. 